Saint Augustine Commentary on Psalm 84 following. Blessed are those who dwell in your house, verse 4. If you have your own house, you are poor. If God's, you are rich. In your own house, you will fear robbers. Of the house of God, he himself the wall. Therefore, blessed are those who dwell in your house. They possess the heavenly Jerusalem without constraint, without pressure, without difference and division of boundaries. All have it, and each have all. Great are those riches. Brother crowds not brother. There is no want there. Next, what will they do there? For among men it is necessary, which is the mother of all employments. I have already said in brief, brethren, run in your mind through any occupations, and see if it is not necessity alone which produces them. Those very eminent arts which seem so powerful in giving help to others, the art of speaking in their defense or of medicine in healing, for these are the most excellent employments in this life. Take away litigants, who is there for the advocate to help? Take away wounds and diseases, what is there for the physician to cure? and all those employments of ours which are required and done for our daily life arise from necessity. To plow, to sow, to clear fallow ground, to sail, what is it which produces all these works but necessity and want? Take away hunger, thirst, nakedness, who has need of all these things? For instance, the injunction. Break your bread to the hungry. For whom could you break bread if there were nobody hungry? Take in the ruthless poor into your house. Isaiah 58, 7. What stranger is there to take in where all live in their own country? What sick person to visit where they enjoy perpetual health? What litigants do to reconcile where there is everlasting peace? What dead to bury, where there is eternal life? None of those honorable actions which are common to all men will then be your employment, nor any of these good works. The young swallows will then fly out of their nest. What then? You have said already what we shall have. Those who dwell in your house are blessed. Say now what they shall do, for I see not then any need to induce me to action. Even what I am now saying and arguing springs from some need. Will there be any such argument there to teach the ignorant or remind the forgetful? Or will the gospel be read in that country where the word of God itself shall be contemplated? They shall be always praising you. This shall be our whole duty and unceasing hallelujah. Think not, my brethren, that there will be any weariness there. If you are not able to endure long here in saying this, it is because, it is because someone draws you away from that enjoyment. If what is not seen gives not so much joy here, if, if with so much eagerness under the pressure and weakness of the flesh we praise that which we believe, how shall we praise that which we see? When death shall be swallowed up in victory, when this mortal shall have put on immortality, 1 Corinthians fifteen fifty four, no one will say, I have been standing a long time, no one will say, I have fasted a long time. I have watched a long time. For there shall be great endurance, and our immortal bodies shall be sustained in contemplation of God. And if the word which we now dispense to you keeps you, fleek, keeps you weak flesh standing so long, what will be the effect of that joy? How will it change us? 
for we shall be like him, since we shall see him as he is. 1 John 3 2. Being made like him, when shall we ever faint? What shall do us off? Brethren, we shall never be satiated with the praise of God, with the love of God. If love could fail, praise could fail. But if love be eternal, as there will there be beauty inexhaustible, fear not, lest you be not able to praise for ever him whom you shall be able to love for ever. For this life let us sigh. But how shall we come thither? Happy is the man whose strength is in you. Verse 5. He knew where he was, and that by reason of the frailty of his flesh he could not fly to that state of blessedness. He thought upon his own burden, as it is said elsewhere, for the corruptible body weighs down the soul, and the earthly house depresses the understanding which has many thoughts. Wisdom 9.15 the spirit calls upward, the weight of the flesh calls back again downward. Between the double effort to raise and to weigh down, a kind of struggle ensues. This struggle goes toward the pressure of the wine press. Hear how the apostle describes this same struggle of the wine press, for he was himself afflicted there. There he was pressed. Miserable man that I am! Who shall deliver me from the body of this death? The grace of God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Romans 7, 24 and 25 For I delight in the law of God according to the inner man. But what, what shall I do? How shall I fly? How shall I arrive thither? I see another law in my members. And as in the words of the Apostle, that difficulty and that almost inextricable struggle is alleviated by the addition, the grace of God through Jesus Christ our Lord, so here when he sighed in the ardent longing for the house of God and those praises of God, and when a kind of despair arose at the feeling of the burden of the body and the weight of the flesh, again he awoke to hope and said, verse 5, Blessed is the man whose taking up is in you. What then does God supply by his grace to him whom he takes hold of to lead him on? He goes on to say, he has placed steps in his heart. Where does it place steps in his heart? In the valley of weeping, verse 6. So here you have for a winepress the valley of weeping. The very pious tears in tribulation are the new wine of those that love. They went forth weeping, he says, casting their seed. Therefore, by the grace of God, may upward steps be placed in your heart. Rise by loving. Hence, the psalm of decrees is called, He has placed steps of ascent to the place which he has appointed. Verse 7. Now we lament. Whence proceed our lamentation? But from that place where the steps of our ascent are placed? Whence comes our lament lamentation? But from that cause wherefore the apostle exclaimed that he was a wretched man, because he saw another law in his members, warring against the law in his mind? Romans. 7.23. And whence does this proceed? From the penalty of sin. And we thought that we could easily be righteous as it were by our own strength before we received the command, but when the command came, sin revived. But I died. Romans 7.9 says the Apostle, for a law was given to men not, not such as could save them at once, but it was to show them in what severe sickness they were lying. But when sin was made manifest by the law given, sin was but increased, for it is both sin and against the law. Sin, says he, 
taking occasion by the command, Wrought in me all manner of concupiscence. Romans 7, 8 What does he mean by taking occasion by the law? Having received the command, men tried us by their own strength to obey it. Conquered by lust, they became guilty of transgression of this very command also. But what says the apostle? When where sin abounded, grace has much more abounded. Romans 5.20 That is, the disease increased, the medicine became of more avail. Accordingly, my brethren did those five porches of Solomon, in the middle of which the pool lay, heal the sick at all? The sick, says the evangelist, lay in the five porches. John 5.3 In the Gospel we have and read it. Those five porches are the law in the five books of Moses. For this cause the sick were brought forth from their houses, for they might lie in the porches. So the law brought the sick men forth, but did not heal them. But by the blessing of God the water was disturbed, as by an angel descending into it. At the sight of the water, troubled, the one person who was able descended and was healed. That water surrounded by the five porches was the people of the Jews shut up in their law. The Lord came and disturbed these people so that he himself was slain. For if the Lord had not troubled the Jews by coming down to them, would he have been crucified? So that the troubled water signified the passion of the Lord, which arose from his troubling the Jewish people. The sick man who believes in this passion like him who descended into the troubled water, is healed thereby. He whom the law could not heal, that is, while he lay in the porches, is healed by grace, by faith, in the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ.